Consider that you've got two lines on a graph that intersect each other at a certain point. In this video, we're going to use the elimination method to find out the coordinates of the point of intersection. All right. So if you haven't watched our video on the substitution method of solving linear systems yet, we highly encourage you to stop this video and watch that one first. With that being said, let's get started. The best way to explain this method is by doing some examples together. In this example, we've got two equations. The idea of elimination is to add both equations together in order to eliminate one of the variables. So we start by taking the left side of the first equation and adding it to the left side of the second equation. Then we also add the right side of the first equation with the right side of the second equation. So we've got 3x plus y plus x minus y equals negative 2 plus 1. All right, so all we have to do from here is simplify this we can see that we've got plus y and minus y on the left side, which would cancel each other out, leaving us with 3x plus x equals negative 2 plus 1. Now, if we simplify both sides, we get 4x equals negative 1. Let's divide both sides by 4 to isolate x and get x equals negative 1 over 4. Now let's double check our work to see if this is correct. We can do this by plugging the x value into both equations and if they both yield the same y value, then we know that we have indeed found an intersection point. Plugging in negative one over four into this equation gives us the following. Simplifying this gives us negative three over four plus y equals negative two. Now, we add both sides by 3 over 4 and we get y equals 3 over 4 minus 2, which is y equals negative 5 over 4. The question is, if we plug in x equals negative 1 over 4 into the other equation, would we also get y equals negative 5 mm -hmm. over 4? If so, we know that this truly is an intersection point and that we have found our solution. Let's try it out. Plugging negative 1 over 4 for x gives us the following. Let's add 1 over 4 to both sides to get negative y equals 1 plus 1 over 4. We know that that's the same as negative y equals 5 over 4. And of course, if we multiply both sides by negative 1, we get y equals negative 5 over 4. So it looks like the two y values are the same meaning that we found our solution. Thus, our point of intersection between these two linear equations is the coordinates negative one over four, comma, negative five over four. Awesome. So notice how we added the two equations to get rid of one of the variables. That left us with an equation with one variable and a value, making it easy for us to find our solution. In the example that we just did, however, you'll notice that it was easy to just add the two equations together since one equation had plus y and the other equation had minus y, making it very obvious that all you'd have to do is just add the two equations together. Sometimes, however, you will need to manipulate the equation to ensure that one of the variables will be eliminated in the process of adding the two equations together. So, let's try another example. Here is another set of equations. Let's say that you wanted to eliminate the variable x this time. It looks like we've got negative x and negative 2x here. If you were to add these two equations together, then this part here would simply turn into negative 3x. Clearly, we wouldn't be eliminating anything if we were to do this. The question is then, how would we be able to turn this negative x into a positive 2x? Because after all, negative 2x plus 2x would eliminate the x variable. Well, if you were to multiply negative 2 to this 
negative x, then you'd get positive 2x. But be careful here. While we want to say that this is true, you cannot simply multiply negative 2 randomly to this one term. That would completely change the equation, and we'd be looking at a whole different line on the graph if we were to do that. We can manipulate the equation, however, so long as we don't change the actual line. In order to do this, we need to perform equal operations onto both sides of the equation. Keep in mind that what we want to do is to multiply negative 2 to the negative x term in order to get the 2x. So why don't we just multiply all of the left side and all of the right side by negative 2 then? This would keep the integrity of the line in that we would be looking at the exact same line after the algebraic manipulation. If you multiply both sides by negative 2, you would have to use the distributive property to simplify the left side. We'd get negative 10y plus 2x equals negative 2. Awesome! So we haven't changed the actual line. If you plot this out on the graph, it will be the exact same as before. What we have done, however, is this. We've set up the equation in a way where all you would have to do is add the two equations together. What you would get is negative 9y equals 1 after eliminating x. Dividing both sides by negative 9 isolates y by giving us y equals negative 1 over 9. Alright, so we can use this y equals negative 1 over 9 to plug it back into our two original equations and if we get the same x value, then of course, we can confirm that we found our solution. So the first equation becomes negative 1 over 9 minus 2x equals 3. We add both sides by 1 over 9 to get negative 2x equals 3 plus 1 over 9, which is the same as 28 over 9. Then we divide both sides by negative 2 and we get x equals negative 28 over 18. And of course, there's a common factor on the numerator and the denominator of 2. So we can simplify this fraction to get x equals negative 14 over 9. By the way, if you got confused by this part, the problem is not within your understanding of what we just learned. The problem is probably within the firm understanding of fractions. We encourage you to go over our multiplication and division of fractions video in particular before moving on if this part seems too difficult of a jump. Now let's plug negative 1 over 9 in for y in the other equation. We'd get negative 5 over 9 minus x equals 1. If we add negative 5 over 9 on both sides of the equation, we'd get negative x equals 1 plus 5 over 9. 1 plus 5 over 9 equals 14 over 9. Then let's divide both sides by negative 1 and we'd get x equals negative 14 over 9. And there it is. We've confirmed that our y value yields the same x values for both equations. So it looks like we found our point of intersection and it seems to be that negative 14 over 9 comma negative 1 over 9 is our solution. Awesome. So our second example had some rough fractions in there. But again, this should be no more difficult than our first example. If it just seems randomly difficult, it really means that you need to absolutely perfect your knowledge of fractions. Make sure you polish up on our fractions video and revisit this video if that was an issue. So thanks for sticking through this one, and we will see you in our next lesson.